Okay, let me show you my idea for an improved version of the locking mechanism. So on the first side, I used a little plate. Um, I first made a paper template for it uh, with a three-quarter inch hole for a three-quarter inch bolt. Um, some other holes, three-eighths for a, a cross pin for locking this in the different angles. And I used a pipe cap. Uh, the trouble with that was that the end is curved. It was hard to get the bolt nice and straight. So I thought instead, aha, what if we use a pipe coupler? Because that's nice and flat on both ends. So I took my original paper template and I modified it a little bit. So here's a slightly improved version. Uh, really the only big difference there is you see a large circle on it. And the reason why is because I want to be able to center the pipe on that bolt um, so that we have everything kind of nice and coaxial. To start, I put my paper template right down onto my metal plate and I use an auto punch to mark the center. Then I'm using an eighth inch drill bit to drill a pilot hole through here. Oh look, I'm using the bent drill bit. Then I'm cleaning up the metal with a flapper disc on my angle grinder just to get it nice and clean for welding. Where I want to place that pipe coupler is an area, not just a single point. So what I'm going to do is use a compass. I'm going to transfer that circle from my template just based on distance from the center and draw a pencil line here where I'll put the pipe cap. Then I can also use the compass here to draw the line for the distance that my other holes need to be from the center. I'm going to drill out the hole with my step drill bit, working my way all the way up to three quarters of an inch. Once it's there, I've got a big enough hole to put my three quarter inch bolt in. Then I can put on a washer and a nut and tighten that down. Uh, the idea here is that it'll keep the bolt uh, nice and snug in place at a good right angle so that it's perfectly straight when I weld it in place. I first tack welded the head of the bolt on three sides. And then I went back and made full welds all the way around the head of the bolt to the metal plate and cleaned it up with a wire brush. I set the pipe coupler centered around the head of the bolt, made a series of tack welds around the pipe coupler, and then finally made a complete weld bead all the way around. So this is our part after welding and brushing off all the yuck from the welding. So. Got that three quarter inch bolt welded on the inside, through the plate, thread sticking out this side, and welded that two inch pipe coupler to that plate. Not saying I'm the world's greatest welder, but as long as it's solid, I'm happy. Back at the upright, I decided I'm just going to drill right through the C-channel. This is actually a suggestion I had uh, back on when I originally did this from one of the viewers. Uh, at the time, I didn't do it this way, partly because it's pretty thick material and it's pretty far across, but I did find some long pins at a local store. So what I'm doing here is just drilling an eighth inch hole, uh, basically just to mark this to get started. Then I can use an extra long eighth inch drill to go through this hole and drill through the other side of the C-channel. I also made an end swivel for the opposite end of the solar array, and you can tell this one looks a little bit different. Part of it is that I'm rounding off the corners here, uh, mostly for aesthetics, but you can also see that pipe coupler is shorter. I'm not using the whole thing. And basically, this is just where I screwed up. Uh, it turns out that a two inch pipe coupler is longer than an inch and a quarter pipe cap. And since I had originally based uh, how far apart the uprights are on the first side, the entire thing was just a little too long. So the easiest thing to do was just to cut the pipe coupler shorter and call it good. Since I now had my lengths figured out, I could take the end swivel and screw it onto the end of the pipe. I did prime it ahead of time and then just threaded it on by hand, 
Once it started getting tight, I used a pipe wrench to really crank down on this thing and rotate it into the correct position. What I really wanted to do here was just make sure that the end plate here exactly cleared the upright, and that'll be used for uh, the locking position. Once I had it where I wanted, I just used my angle grinder with a flapper disc to clean off some of the paint here. Then I protected the solar panels with a fiberglass blanket, attached my ground clamp, and welded this in place. I just welded a bead here from the pipe to the coupler, so they're together forever. Sure hope I did it right. On the other end, I did the exact same thing, screwing the pipe coupler in place, making sure that everything was aligned correctly, protecting the solar panels with the fiberglass blanket, and then welding the pipe coupler to the pipe. So I'm going to lock the solar panels in one position. I'll start with vertical because that's easy. I've got a eighth inch but really long drill bit to go all the way through the C-channel and then through this plate. So that way I got a nice little centered hole and then from the other side I can properly drill out to three eighths. So now I've got three holes nicely lined up. Next, I set the solar panels to horizontal, checking that with my level, and then I put my long eighth inch drill bit through the C-channel to drill an eighth inch matching hole through the plate on the end cap. I repeated this a couple of times, drilling eighth inch holes with the panels at some different angles, but I wanted to make sure that I had some specific angles, so I used the level feature on my smartphone to make sure I could hit those uh, for example, right here, 30 degrees. Since I had my hole centered with those 1 8 inch pilot bits, I could enlarge those with my step drill and then go back with a 3 8 inch bit to get the final correct hole size and then test it out with a 3 8 inch pin. And since I got all my holes back there done, I gotta drill this out now. I enlarged the hole with my step drill bit and then finished it off with a 3 8 inch drill bit. Now on the far side of the C-channel, that actually took a while to drill because I couldn't fit the step drill bit back there. I just had to go all the way through slowly with that 3 8 inch bit. Um, but then once I had that, I was able to put the pin in, 3 8 inch pin, and go all the way through all three holes, locking the panels in place. On the opposite end, I needed it to perfectly match the first end. So the first thing I did was drill the 3 8 inch hole through the C-channel. Then I put a center punch through and smacked it with a hammer uh, to mark where I would drill the holes. Then I rotated the panel to the other positions and again used the center punch to mark where I'd have the holes. After that, I went through and drilled all the holes out to 3 8 uh, right here is a nice little view of the mark that punch left. Once I was done drilling all the holes, I went through and gave a coat of paint to both ends. After reinstalling the bearing, the solar panels can now fully rotate and they miss the toolbox on both sides. And the panels can now be locked into position, horizontal, vertical, and a couple of different angles. Make sure you subscribe so you get the next video in the series as it is crunch time. I told somebody I'd bring the solar trailer out to a public event, but I'm not done yet. I still have to do sanding and painting, wiring, grounding, installing the battery, and much, much more. I hope you like these videos. Please like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends. I'd love it if you would tell them about this YouTube channel. And until next time, stay charged up.